us on AM today. It's quarter to nine. Look at the stunning shot of Nelson this morning. It's currently 13 degrees there, taking 22 minutes from Wakefield into the city and 30 minutes from the city to Cable Bay. Traffic updates thanks to our partner Battery Zone, your local battery expert. Good beautiful. morning, Nelson. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Quarter to nine now. It might seem like an oxymoron to have a delicatessen store that has no real meat or cheese. But one such store exists in Christchurch. Greater Goods is a delicatessen and bistro that specialises in fine vegan meats and cheeses and is also New Zealand's first Kiwi producer of plant-based charcuterie. Did I got that right? Well done. Yeah. <laughs> um, vegan chef Flip Greater is with me now. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you here. So, why, okay, first, I'm assuming it's just like planet, planetary reasons? Yeah, all the reasons. Yeah. Yeah, there are plenty of reasons these days. But for me, it was really about creating something that, you know, you don't have to compromise your, your principles for pleasure anymore. It's really about creating something that is good for the planet and also delicious. Tastes good. Yeah. So I can key. smell this. So what have we got here? What are we looking at? This is our plant pastrami, but we make a selection of charcuterie and cheeses and spreads and dips and things like that. But we've been working out of our little bistro in Christchurch for a long time now, and now we've just hit the supermarkets. Oh, wow. Um, so we're just, um, we're, any day now we'll be in the New Worlds across North Island, and we're already in the New Worlds across South Island. Awesome. Because it's kind of gone mainstream now, hasn't it, the, the, the whole vegan thing? And, and even if you're not fully vegan, I know a lot of people who eat the odd, you know, vegan meal. Mm -hmm. So it's not just... You know, I suppose back in the day, was it quite a select group of people who were actually, you know, eating vegan food? Yeah, and it was mostly women. And, you know, I've, I'm reaching 25 years vegan now. And when I was first vegan, I used to carry my own soy milk to cafes. And, you know, you'd eat lentils all day long. And yeah. it's totally changed now, and it's wonderful to be part of that change. Now you can just get completely delicious things. And I think there are two sections of the plant-based food world now there's sort of this tech side and then there's the artisanal side and that's what we do we make really natural healthy vegan products that are actually delicious is the idea so i can see pepperoni here and pastrami mm -hmm. is the idea that it tastes like pepperoni pepperoni and pastrami or is the idea that it, it cooks in the same way or you can use it in the same way or both well both i mean the problem with meat isn't that it doesn't taste good so, you know, it's about being able to hit those same pleasure points um, so without still get the that damage. Taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People still want that savouriness and that unctuousness. My husband and I moved back from Paris a few years ago and we were looking for something to have with a glass of wine. We're big friends, f uh, fans of Apero, you know, having a glass of wine and a snack at the end of the day. And we really felt like there's only so much hummus you can have with <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> so we just wanted something delicious to have that was actually like you know, salty and umami and really unctuous in the mouth and really a nice snack to have alongside a glass of wine. And so we created it because we couldn't find it. Do you think Kiwis have got a long way to go as far as education goes? Because, you know, you go back 20 years and vegetarianism was kind of like, oh, a dirty word and it yeah. can't have any flavour, where now you've even had the biggest meat lovers kind of come across and say, actually, vegetarianism can be tasty as well. Do you think we've got a wee way to go as Kiwis being meat lovers? Certainly, but we've come a long way, and I think we're only going to improve in our, um, in our taste for these things. And as the products get better, it's that sort of chicken and egg thing, so to speak, um, where as the interest grows, the products get better, and so it becomes easier to convert. Mm. Or even just reduce. I mean, our, our people are reducitarians and flexitarians that mm. want to have these products alongside um, traditional antipasti, potentially. Do you know what I like about what you're doing and what you have done is that you are creating a solution. So the thing that used to irk me about, um, not vegans generally, <laughs> um, some of my close friends are vegans, but about those campaigners that would go into the stores and would throw blood on people and would get quite violent and up in people's faces, is that, you know, that's one way to get a message across. Another way is to actually create what you have done and entice people through their taste buds. So yeah, good yeah. on you for doing that. Thank you. I call it delicious activism. <laughs> <laughs> what did it taste like? It was yummy. I very much enjoyed it. it so I don't know. Good. Well, I don't know which one I tried. I tried the small one here. So that's pl that's plant pastrami. Plant pastrami. And we make pepperoni, chorizo, a whole selection of salamis, and yeah. Tasty. Very good. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. Um, right. It is ten away from nine now. That's vegan chef Flip Grater with us.